KR Models Concept Iron Ore Wagons caught my eye recently with their interesting shape and competitive pricing for a three wagon set. I ended up buying three sets, so it's time now to take a closer look. Hi, thanks for joining today's video. We'll kick off with a short unboxing and then we'll get into our usual close-up and 360 views. We'll do a brief running session with nine of these wagons to see how they perform on the track before getting into our summary, scoring and final recommendations. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, we're going to do the unboxing for these KR models. Uh, concept wagons. So I've got three boxes here. I'm just going to open up one of them. We'll use all three for the for the running session. So uh, let me just get one of these open here and I'll get one of these uh, out and we'll take a look at them. So they come in this um, quite economical packaging, I guess, for three models. It's uh, It doesn't take up a lot of space, which is good. So let's take out the two loads. Now I did get these with the loads, so they are obviously cheaper without them. So we'll just take this guy out and take a quick look before we put the loads in. So it's a nice looking wagon uh, in this kind of British rail um, brown color, I guess. And it's, um, it's, 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 it's well put together. Uh, it's a more complex shape obviously than you'd normally have and there is some separately kind of fitted parts that are on the wagon on the front there and the underbody is reasonably detailed as well a little bit kind of a little bit rough looking there I guess um, bogies are pretty simple and the wheels seem to be quite free running so we'll see them when we get them onto the track uh, there's a little bit of plastic there I suppose um, a few little bits and pieces like that. They're, they're not sprung buffers. And you've got a mold line on the buffers on both front and back, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, a bit of sanding and painting may be needed there. Um, but overall, they're, they're fine. They're, they're what I was kind of hoping for, I guess. And uh, we will do the normal close-ups and 360 views on these to, to get a closer look and see the detail. Uh, but overall they, they look pretty good. Uh, the couplers, there's an M pocket in there so you can swap out the couplers. You can see it there, there's a, and a spring loaded. And that should uh, facilitate reasonably close coupling. Um, so that, that's good. So let's put the loads in. So I, sometimes the loads that you can get are good and sometimes they're maybe not so good. I decided to go for them here and I'm looking at them now and kind of glad I did because uh, they do come kind of in a shape that's going to fit into the wagon. You see the notches here. So this is only going to fit one way, which is which is this way. Uh, so we'll get him slotted in. And the little pieces of plastic at the side. A little bit of a tight fit. But he's good, he's fine. And we'll put the other one in. Now these do weigh a little bit, so they add quite a bit of weight to the wagon. Uh, so we'll look at the weights with and without um, the load in case you were to purchase them without the, the load. So it's a very tight fit in, the, in these little plastic bags. It's kind of a pity because you might knock off a bit of the detail when you're taking them out. Okay, so this one goes in this side. And that's the right orientation. Okay, so I think they look pretty good. Um, that's kind of my impression. And they do add a lot of weight, so there's, there's, these are significantly heavier with the loads applied. So we'll see how that what that does from a running resistance perspective, and particularly when we've got nine of these with loads, uh, what that what does that mean for our locomotive? Um, they do seem to be pretty loose running, so I think that should be okay. So it's it's much as I kind of expected, I guess. We will we, I'll say we will do the close up views now. Um, and considering the price of these for three wagons, um, it's, 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 it looks quite pretty good to me. There's a detailing kit there, and that's just with some chain, chain couplers for detail. And there's spots for those, the front and the back. So that's fine. 
Okay, so so far so good uh, for for these models, and we'll see how they what they look like close up now, and then we'll get them onto the track and and take it from there. But so far so good. Okay, let's get into the close up view. So we'll start with our usual side on view here. So we've got one of the wagons here with the lettering on one end, 56 ton wagon. Uh, the bogies are pretty simple, as you'll see on both sides, but very free running. Uh, the detail level is kind of a medium level of detail. There are some separately fitted parts you can see there for the uh, those doors to be able to open up. You can kind of see them now that they don't actually open. But the detail, I think, is, is good enough. You can see the riveting there across the top. And there's a reasonable level of underbody detail as well. And you've got the load, actually the physical load in this particular wagon. A little bit of roughness there, you can see uh, on, just in the middle of the wagon. And I guess I saw this in a couple of the wagons. And uh, it, I suppose from a quality perspective, it probably wouldn't be at the very top level. But overall, there wasn't anything terribly bad about these. And I think in general, if, if you're going to weather these, then obviously something like this doesn't make any difference. And it is a pity that there wasn't a weathered version. I think it would have been nice to have weathered options. Obviously, it would duplicate the number of codes because they'd have to have running numbers for the weathered versions as well. But I would have kind of liked that option, I think particularly for these kind of wagons, because and particularly the time period that they were running in uh, it would be appropriate. We'll just see, look at the end there, we've got the buffers, and we'll see it in the 360 view that there is a, uh, we kind of saw it in the outer box, uh, there is a mold line on those buffers, unfortunately. Uh, they do look uh, not that strong, they're, they're fixed buffers, they're not uh, movable. There's a little bit of uh, piping there at the front as well, and here in the 360 view we get to see the loads from the top. And I think these are absolutely presentable so these wagons are absolutely fine and there was a good consistency across them so i didn't see any, there was no breakage on these there was no parts falling off anywhere uh, you can see those buffers there with the, with that mold line in them which you know a bit of sanding a bit of painting will get rid of that so they're from a quality perspective i think they're reasonably good but they're not they're not the top tier and i think it's the same in terms of the detail level uh, they're you know they're they're at a good level uh, but again not 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 quite a top tier but I think they're absolutely fine, to be honest, from a, a price. When you consider the price you pay for these, I think they're absolutely fine. And you can see I have a little bit of foam underneath them, and that's because they're so free running. Uh, they'd be falling all over the place if I didn't have that foam to hold them in place. So even though the loads are in place, uh, these are quite uh, good running wagons. So overall, I'm pretty pleased with the appearance, and I'm, I'm actually pleased with the loads. I think they fit well. I think they look well, and they look well on the track, and uh, I'm happy with them. Okay, so now we're going to get into the running session. So I don't have a separate video on this, so this is uh, just part of this particular video. Uh, I'm running with uh, the Class 24 here. Uh, now, anybody who asked me about the sound, it's actually running with Class 31 sound, a TTS decoder. So please don't... Um, have too many criticisms this isn't a, a, a video for the sound on this locomotive this is a video for the the actual wagons so they are very smooth and i wasn't sure whether they would be or not the, the running resistance is low even with the loads and they run very well over radius 2 radius 3 over all the point work diamonds etc and i didn't have one derailment in the time that i was running these on the track uh, they seem to run pretty good in reverse as well Overall, I, I think I'm, I'm very pleased with them from a running perspective. Uh, the maximum speed we get up to here now, we're running at the 25 mile an hour level, which is kind of the the, 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 the last speed level that these used to run at. And uh, we'll up this to 45 miles per hour, which was kind of the medium speed that they were used uh, against. Uh, they, they were run at a faster speed initially, but apparently it did uh, create a lot of wear on, uh, on some of the mechanical parts. So they were reduced to 45 miles an hour. Uh, you will notice, notice some of the wagons do have a British Railway uh, logo on them. So we didn't see that during the, the close-up views, but you'll see it here from time to time. About every third wagon, you see it there. They've got a, a British Rail uh, logo on there, and uh, that's, uh, that's, I suppose, a nice touch. It's not on all of them, so they're not all the same. And they, look, they do look the part, and I think if they were weathered, they'd even look the part a bit more uh, to go with the weathered locomotive and uh, the, the brake van, the weathered brake that I've got here. Now we're at the 45 kind of mile, mile an hour mark, and again, these are really smooth. They could run at a lot faster speed than this, and you could run with larger rakes than this. 
Uh, I think these are very good running wagons. They would remind me of the Dapol, a lot of the Dapol wagons, uh, in terms of being very free running, very reliable on the track, no problems over radius two, etc. That's kind of the category I'd put them in, which is a very good category to be in as a freight wagon. They just don't give you any trouble, but I guess that's the, the key point. Again, uh, we're just going to wrap it up here, just come around and that's, that's it. So overall, a very good running session with these wagons. Okay, let's get into the summary. So we've been looking at the KR Models Concept Iron Ore Wagons. Uh, these come in three wagon packs, uh, each with unique running numbers. Uh, there's three original packs and there's three additional packs being added, and they would be in the letters 8F. So you can see the kind of order code format that's used there. And they come with an optional load, so you can get them either without the load or with the load. And you just append load to the uh, part number to get the versions with, with that. The era time frame that these cover is 1954 to 1974. So it would be a bridging period between steam and diesel. So you can either run these with your 9Fs, for example, or you could be running these with uh, something like a class 24 or, or uh, uh, class 40, actually the early class 40s. So uh, if that's what you're modeling, then this is a, a potentially a wagon for you. The running resistance on these, I think, is very low in general. And even with the load, it is a low running resistance, albeit you will start to notice it if you're on an incline because of the sheer weight of the wagon, the, the heavier weight with the load. But in general, I would say that these are low resistance and, and are very good runners. They come with uh, kinematic couplers with M pockets and there's tension locks pre-fitted. And that's basically it. So if you, if you want to change that, you're going to have to provide your own. It's a very small detailing kit uh, with just some uh, chain link uh, detail. Uh, the top scale speed that I tested at was 45 miles an hour, which would be a prototypical speed for these wagons. Uh, they actually went down to about 25 miles an hour, was became the recommended speed for these uh, before they were taken out of service. So these would not be going at any great speed, and you'll kind of see that in the running session. I top it out at 45 miles an hour, which would be prototypical. The unboxed weight without the load is 72 grams, and with the load is 114 grams. Actually feels a little bit heavier, but 114 grams isn't that bad. It's, it's lighter than a coach, for example. So it's probably not as bad as it actually feels. It's just that it is a smaller wagon with, with that sort of weight. Typical setting price without the load. And I'm not sure what the RRP is here because on the KR website, you'll pay £60 without the load, uh, whereas you will find it more expensive at the retailers, between £67 and £69 actually from retailers for, without the load. With the load, it seems to be £72 across the board, which for three wagons is a pretty good price if you think about it. It's less than £25 per wagon, and including a load, so that's not too bad at all, and that's as of May 2023. Okay, so let's get into the scoring. So the running performance I'm giving is a 10 out of 10. There is nothing to criticize on the running performance. I have nine cars, all of them ran really well. Uh, they run well on radius two and radius three. I think you would have challenges on radius one. I didn't attempt to run them there, but even at radius two, you're, the, the buffers are starting to hit each other or just, just very close to it. So I think you've got enough there for radius two, but I think radius one would be a stretch, but that's, not, that's fine because most wagons uh, have a minimum radius two anyway. So these running performance wise were really good. I can't fault them at all and they could certainly run at faster speeds, but obviously that wouldn't be prototypical. I think the fact that the running resistance is very low, prototypical rigs here would be about eight or nine wagons. Potentially you could have up to 18 different running numbers with these. So I've got no issue on performance. I think appearance and detail is good overall. I think they've kind of balanced it between the amount of separately fitted parts and extra detail and the, the overall cost of the, of the wagon and I think it's a good compromise and I think for what it is I think eight and a half I think is a good score extras and variants the main gap here is I, I kind of would have liked to have a weathered option this is a particular type of wagon I think which would have benefited from a weathered option obviously you can do it yourself uh, but it's it's always nice if you can get it off the shelf so that's my main gap here I think you've got enough variation in terms of uh, running numbers etc to run with that's the main gap Build quality, um, a couple of the wagons probably were a little bit rough around the edges, I would say. You can see a mold line on the buffers. It's an 8. Nothing particularly wrong with any of the wagons, so I didn't have any issues with you know pieces falling off, etc. Anything like that. Uh, the, these wagons appear to be fine. 
they're an eight they're not they're not a nine or a ten put it that way packaging and documentation i think the packaging is fine for what they are and it's actually quite economical in terms of the amount of space it takes up some packagings can be very large and take up a lot of space a lot of box space taken up so these are small which which is pretty good uh, there is no documentation really so that's the gap here really it would have probably been nice to even had a, a little leaflet that talked about the wagons a little bit but that's that's what it is so eight out of ten it's, it's fine and price value is very good so it's a nine out of ten if you get the with the load it's probably nearly a 10 out of 10 to be honest i think the best value is getting it with the load in my opinion overall 8.7 i think that's a very good score for what is a modest wagon in one sense it's not a hyper detailed wagon but it's coming in at a really acceptable price and running really well it's got a lot going for it and i think 8.7 makes it a very high scoring wagon so well done to kr models on that i think that's a great score let's get into my final recommendation as this is my first KR Models purchase, I have to say I'm very pleased with these wagons. They look good, they perform well on the track, and they come in at a very attractive price point. The optional wagon loads are of good quality, and the price differential for them isn't excessive. I would have liked to have seen a weathered variant for a wagon type like this, but that's probably just my preference. There were a few minor quality items, but nothing fatal at all, and particularly in the context of the price of these wagons. So as such, I have no hesitation in highly recommending them for anyone who is modelling this era and geography. And if you just want to have some interesting wagons on your layout, it's up to you, of course, as well, as you are the CEO and owner of your layout. So you can choose what you want to run. So well done to KR Models for hitting what I believe is an excellent balance between detail, quality and price. For a wagon type I haven't seen previously in double O gauge, though I have seen wagons of this type in other scales in the past. So what are your thoughts on the KR Models Concept Iron Ore Wagons? Would you be tempted? If you own these wagons yourself, what has been your experience with them? And have you been pleased with your purchase? As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments. So thanks for joining today. Please hit a like if you found this video of interest. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. In the meantime, take care and happy modeling.